Welcome back to our Beginning with Onyx videos. I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video, I'm going to teach you about making your first cues and cue lists. Now, if you're new to Onyx, you might not know the difference between these two and it's really simple. Cues make up cue lists. So whether you record one cue to a given fader or button or record many, it's a cue list and it contains cues. So now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and build our first one. We're going to go through the same steps we've been going through to create things already. So I'm just going to go ahead, select some fixtures, give them some parameters. I'm going to do this via my presets, if at all possible, because it's going to save me later. So I'll go intensity at full, go ahead to color, set a color. I haven't made any pan tilt ones yet, so we're just going to ignore that for now. Then go to my dimmers. We'll set them as at full as well. If I go to my programmer, I can now scroll through this and I'm able to see the different lights that I have in my show and the presets that have been applied. Similarly, if I go to the 2D plan view, I can now see the same thing. I can see my fixtures, my moving fixtures are on and in red and my conventional fixtures are on at full. Now I'm just gonna go ahead, bring up my command keypad or use the physical button on my hardware press record, and press the playback where I want it to go. For this example, I'm using the main playbacks. Boom. I click that. Now I can give it a name. So I'll just go ahead and uh, call this um, test red full. And now we've got a number of different cue list types. These all do different things, and we're going to go over those in just a minute. So let's use just this red cue list. Perfect. Now I can go ahead and make my second cue. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna select these Artiste Picassos. And this time I'm gonna go to my presets. I'm gonna make them green. Perfect. Now I can see that it reflected my 2D plan. I can press record. And now I can add this to this cue list by just clicking on the same cue list or I can press enter because this cue list is selected. I can see that by the white line it has around it. Perfect. So now I'm gonna clear twice. We can see everything clear out here on our stage, our 2D plan. And now I can pop this up or press the play button on my, on my hardware. Again, I just double clicked to pop it up. And now I press play. We see Q1, just as we recorded it, all the lights fade up to full and uh, the moving heads fade into red. Now Q2, perfect. They fade to green. If I press it again, by default, the Q list is gonna wrap around to the start. So back to red back to green. Now, you can record cue lists here once you press record. You can also record them in a few other places. So, for example, if I go to my playback workspace, I can then find the playback buttons. These are on-screen playbacks that you're able to just go ahead and press record, press the playback, and you record a cue list there. Also, in the DJ, we can find ourselves the M Touch M Play window. And in the M Touch M Play window, we can see here, it's telling me that the M Play window is a little small, so I just have to click that and it's gonna resize to make it fit. Hide my command keypad here. I can now see the M Touch, which mirrors the main playback faders on the console, and the M Play, which is the submaster faders on the console. As you'll learn more about Onyx, you'll understand the difference between these, but it's not a huge deal right now. You can record to any of these when you record a cue. And let's talk about cue list types for a second as well. So if I go here and press record, I did that off screen, but I brought in my command keypad, pressed record, and then press the playback. You can see here that there are six options of types of playbacks. The first is the regular standard cue list. What this does is as you saw, when you bring the fader up and press play, you're gonna see the look that you created fade in. Now, if you bring the fader up and down, the intensity level, if it's recorded in those cues, is going to be affected, but not any of the other parameters of the lights. So your color's not going to change, your position's not going to change, and effects aren't going to be changed. Next, we have Submaster. This is the highest takes precedence intensity fader. So if you have this fader at full and the lights are recorded on it at full, they're going to output at full, no matter what other cue lists or submasters are doing. We'll compare that to a cue list, which uses 
LTP or latest takes precedence where the most recent queue list played is going to take the parameter um, that you've recorded. So keep in mind the difference between those. I'll also link to a video in the notes here on YouTube that explains the differences of HTTP and LTP in a little more depth. Next, we have our chase function. The chase allows you to build a bunch of queues on top of one queue list, just different looks you want to bounce through. And then you're able to use the beat button on the console or set a manual rate, and it's just going to bounce through those queues really quickly or at whatever speed you set. Inhibitive is kind of like an upside down submaster. It subtracts from the look on stage. So you take the intensity of some fixtures, you record it to the inhibitive, and when you bring the inhibitive down, it scales back the intensity level of those fixtures on your stage. Now, you have to have the inhibitive at full in order to get output from these lights, but bringing it at full doesn't give the lights output. You have to give them output somewhere else, and then inhibitive just subtracts. The override fader, this purple one right here, is a higher priority fader, so it always wins output to the stage compared to other faders, and it crossfades all the parameters. So color, positions, effects, everything else gets crossfaded as you use this fader. So you bring it up and down, as well as intensity. And last time code allows you to time code a show or have it follow a specific timing, either from maybe a video or an audio track, and your lighting will play back in sync every time once you program it. Also, under the override fader, there's a special type of fader called the cue blender. And it allows you, as you bring the fader up, to transition between multiple cues at different percentages. This is really powerful. And while I don't have the time to go into depth here on that or the deeper function of all these different types of cue lists, I do go into more depth inside of the Onyx for Newbies action plan over on Learn Stage Lighting Labs. So if you're interested, be sure to check out Learn Stage Lighting Labs where you get personalized assistance in our forums and access to a vast library of training videos, not only on Onyx and other consoles, but also on lighting and how to use lighting the most effective way. Awesome. So that, that about covers it for cues and cue lists. And in our next video, we're going to start diving into effects and how you use them inside Onyx, and most importantly, how to make great effects for your show.